Hello, welcome Renegade Inc. This is a Renegade short and it's on the subject of whether we should be running government surplus or not. We're here with Professor Steve Keane. He's going to walk us through it. Steve, I'm going to come up with this argument. We should run a government surplus. It's a good idea because the government then can invest. They've got more money. Mm. They tax us less, etc. Yep. Is that the case? No, unfortunately. Wish it was that simple. But I think with people, what people do is they think like, a, like their own household where they can actually spend less than they earn and it all works out nice and easily. So th is this extrapolating a household budget into yeah. a government budget? And that's, that's the area everybody's doing. So let's actually think at the scale we talk about an entire economy and we say here's a, let's divide it into and call this the private sector and the government sector and see what actually is involved if the government's going to run a surplus. Now for it to run a surplus it has to tax you more than it spends on you. No, I don't like the idea. Okay, what happens as a result is, let's say it's a 50 billion pound surplus, then that means they're taking 50 billion pounds out of circulation. So uh, that's money out of the economy. Which can also mean if the money turns over twice a year, that can reduce total spending by 100 billion pounds. Right. So you've actually reduced GDP and reduced the amount of money in circulation. So when that money is taken out, where does the private economy go to, to make up the shortfall? Well, what they've done, they've gone to the banks and they've borrowed from the banks either households or firms, and if you just borrow and simply keep it constant, then you have a 50 billion increase in your money from the bank, credit which you can spend, but that credit causes an increase in the level of debt you owe. What sort of debt? Private debt. Right. And this is what's exploded, and this is what's caused the financial crisis, and that's what's caused the current slump in the economy. So we can get historical context. Yeah. Let's just have a look at the private debt from the 80, UK specifically, private debt from the 1800s. Mm. Walk yeah. us through it. What you see is that the data starts in 1880. From between 1880 and 1980, there's no trend. There's booms and slumps overall, but there's no trend in the level of private debt. It stays below 75% of GDP. Yeah, but there's some irregularities here. What's happened? Then in 1980, 80, 79, 80, we have a, a new conservative government that believes that uh, we should treat the economy like a household and tries to run surpluses and liberates the financial sector to let capitalism rip. What actually happened from that point is that it wasn't capitalism that ripped, it was the financial sector. We went from a debt level of 55% of GDP to 195% back in 2010. And from that point on, nobody wants to borrow any money anymore, credit demand has evaporated and we're in an almost permanent slump. So while we're looking at graphs, let's quickly uh, look at the US. When the US did try to run surpluses, mm. or run surpluses, what happened? Well, it's over 120 years of data, it's run surpluses sustained on two occasions. The first in the 1920s, and that led to the Great Depression because the money coming out, people borrow from banks, speculate on stock markets, stock market bubbles, then it crashes, you've still got the debt, we had the Great Depression. The second occasion was under Clinton. Right. And what looked like responsible spending was actually taking money out of the private sector, who borrowed it from the banking sector to speculate on housing, drove up the debt, and we then had the crisis of 2007, 2008. So as we stand here today, and the government want to run a surplus, the Conservative government in the UK think a government surplus is a good idea. What's your message? It's a wrong idea because to actually have a monetary economy, your money factories have to be producing more money for us to spend. We have so what, so how do, what's the element that's missing in here? What we're listing out is the government is the only institution that owns its own bank, the central bank. And the central bank finances what the government wants to do yeah. and can finance it indefinitely so long as we continue accepting British pounds as forms of payment within Britain, which we do. So if the government runs a, runs a deficit, it's actually injecting money into the economy. And unlike money coming from the banking sector, it doesn't come with an obligation to repay. It comes with an obligation to pay tax, but not to pay it all back. Right. So it's actually a sleeping giant. Yeah. This is the way we could actually finance, for example, university education. So when journalists persistently ask the, the, the Labour uh, opposition at the moment here in the UK, they say to them, you know, how are you going to pay for it? What's your answer? Tuition it, fees, for instance, they want to scrap all tuition. Yeah. The government runs a deficit financed by the central bank, spends money into the economy, it stimulates the economy and it gives us an educated youth that are not encumbered by private debt as they are under the current scheme. It's a decent investment idea. Yeah. Lastly, a government surplus a good idea? No. Government is one of our two money factories. A government running a surplus is a government destroying money and telling us to grow at the same time. Thanks for clearing it up. That's it, Renegade Inc. This is a Renegade Short. This was Steve Keane and a government surplus. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs>